Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at D2S with Leo Pang, who's going to talk today about curvilinear data in photo masks. Leo, what is curvilinear data? Uh, curvilinear data for masks, uh, in general, refers to the uh, result from a curvilinear IoT. Uh, so basically, uh, IoT is a process that starts from the wafer target. You uh, mathematically calculate the optimum mask. And uh, it turned out uh, uh, those uh, optimum mask uh, is uh, curvilinear. So when we uh, talk about the curvilinear data, in general, we are talking about uh, those uh, uh, curvilinear uh, patterns. Uh, and it's generated uh, from an IoT program. And also, uh, those patterns will be uh, put on the mask and will go through uh, all those uh, like inspection, review, and repair. So why don't we take a look at that in depth? Sure. So Leo, what are we looking at here? Uh, so here I'm uh, showing uh, you an example of the curvilinear data. So on the left, uh, this is uh, actually a mask pattern, curvilinear mask pattern that's actually generated by our TrueMask IoT program. Uh, and uh, you can see uh, the, uh, the target, uh, this pattern actually, mask pattern want to print is on the right. So they are basically the contact array. And you do notice uh, many people use the target, wafer target, just like a square. But uh, uh, on wafer, they are actually uh, like more like those uh, holes, right? Uh, like a disk around it. So they are coming near on wafer. But uh, you look at the, this mask pattern, they're especially they are very curvilinear. So this is a result of the uh, curvilinear IoT. And uh, you can see uh, it has those uh, rounded uh, uh, pattern in the middle, but uh, it also has those uh, assist features, uh, which is uh, very curvilinear. Uh, they actually will help uh, this mask to print uh, that uh, wafer target. Uh, and uh, this pattern is uh, very curvilinear. So we, we need to handle this kind of curvilinear uh, and also the whole ecosystem uh, for both masks. Uh, they need the, to run exercise uh, using this kind of a curvilinear pattern. Why now? W what's changed in the industry? What's changed in chip making? Oh, why now? That's a very good question. So first, uh, uh, before uh, people, like uh, we want to create those curvilinear patterns on masks, it's very difficult. Uh, that's why the mask industry invented the uh, uh, multi-beam mask writer. So the multi-beam mask writer can write all kind of shape in a constant write time. Uh, with that, uh, then the industry really needs something uh, to generate those curvilinear data. And we just uh, came up, we can actually create this uh, curvilinear IoT for full chip in one day. So how do you get that data? Um, very good question. So uh, for uh, people uh, like in the foundry, they, uh, they are going to run curvilinear IoT, so they are going to get this data. Uh, but for uh, the, uh, the whole ecosystem, like the equipment vendors, uh, it's difficult to get uh, uh, this kind of uh, curvilinear data, uh, especially in the past. Is it becoming easier? Is something changed here that people can now get their hands on this and take a look at it and understand this from, from a design side? Uh, yeah, so now we came up with an idea, a uh, new product uh, that actually can generate uh, those kind of curvilinear data much quicker and uh, much uh, cost effective uh, than before. Why don't we drill into that? How do we do that? So what are we looking at here? Yeah, so uh, what I'm showing you here is actually a curvilinear mask and another one is a digital twin of the curvilinear mask. Um, curvy, uh, digital twin becomes uh, very popular. Uh, this is a, a concept that, that uh, came from uh, deep learning. Uh, in general, uh, digital twin means uh, you have a, a virtual representation of the product or the process of the system. Uh, and there are two ways to generate a digital twin. Uh, one is uh, by using simulations. Uh, another way is actually the method we use here uh, is to use the deep neural network, use the deep learning uh, to create a, a virtual twin uh, of the real uh, product. And uh, over here, this is basically the digital twin of our curvilinear IoT product. And they're not exact, but is it close enough that it doesn't make a difference in the fab? 
Yeah, exactly. They're not exact. So uh, if you use this to print the wafer and want to uh, shoot at the target or with the largest process window, they may not be the uh, 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 best. Uh, however, you look at the pattern, they are really close. So uh, for uh, all those equipment uh, uh, vendors, they can actually use this uh, digital twin to really exercise uh, their product. For example, uh, the inspection tool can actually use uh, this digital twin to generate uh, a full chip uh, of a uh, full radical uh, curvilinear IoT uh, pattern, and uh, then they can uh, exercise their mass inspection tool to make sure uh, they can handle all kind of those uh, uh, corner cases or uh, the defect on uh, the curvilinear data. So that's perfect. So just to reiterate, you don't want to take a digital twin to production, right? Oh, you don't want to take a digital twin of an IoT for production to print a wafer, uh, but you want to use the digital twin to exercise uh, all kind of like a equipment that will that has to handle uh, the curvilinear data, like for example, mask inspection tools. And so this also greatly reduces the cost of developing this, right? Because now cost of developing and also testing it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, in the old days, uh, for example, for the uh, mass inspection, uh, to really exercise um, curvilinear IoT data, they have to uh, either talk to our customer or talk to those uh, uh, EDA companies that has a uh, curvilinear IoT product so that they can actually generate uh, a full radical curvilinear uh, mass patterns for them. Uh, but now uh, they don't have to. They can actually uh, uh, get a digital twin of the curvilinear IoT, and this is a uh, much uh, uh, less expensive uh, than the true uh, curvilinear IoT product. You can just pay less than 100K, uh, you can get a, uh, the digital twin, uh, then you can generate the full radical curvilinear data, and you can generate as many as what you want uh, to really uh, exercise to make sure uh, your product uh, uh, is uh, ready, really ready for high volume, high volume production of the curvilinear. So really what you're doing is taking advantage of a lot of the machine learning techniques and applying them into the photo mass space where it's never really been used before, right? Yeah, e exactly, because uh, uh, as I just uh, said, in the old time, uh, it's very difficult to get a full radical collinear pattern, right? Now, with deep learning, with digital twin, uh, from deep learning, you can get this uh, very cost effectively and very fast. Is this going to be useful going down to, say, three nanometers, one and a half nanometers, as well as uh, some of the advanced packaging that's out there? Uh, yeah, so uh, curvilinear pattern uh, right now uh, is mainly used for uh, 193i, uh, 193 immersion, uh, but for uh, uh, EOA at a seven nanometer, they don't really need the uh, curvilinear IoT but uh, down to like uh, uh, three nanometer definitely required, and five nanometer they can actually uh, leverage it as well. Leo Peng, thanks for a great explanation and very interesting subject. You're welcome, thank you.